In this part of the lesson, we're going to cover the basics of declaring and working with simple variables in VBA. Strictly speaking, VBA doesn't require you to declare variables before you use them, but it is good practice to do so, and it's worthwhile getting into this habit as early as possible. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and then when the file's been opened, we can click the Enable Content button to allow any code in the workbook to run. What we have is a list of characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and some information about their weight in kilograms and height in meters. And the aim of this exercise is to calculate the BMI or body mass index for each of the characters in this list. We already have some code in the VB editor which allows us to process the list from top to bottom. Let's head into the Visual Basic editor just to see what that looks like. So developer Visual Basic. And we have a simple loop, a do until loop, which should be familiar to you if you've watched the previous module, module three, on conditional statements and loops. And all this does currently is moves down one cell at a time, starting in cell A3, until we reach a blank cell at the bottom. What we need to do for this exercise is to add the code which will calculate the body mass index. If we look at how the body mass index is calculated, that can give us some useful information about how many variables we need to declare. So the body mass index is calculated by dividing the weight in kilograms by the height in meters squared. I think that tells us that we need three variables, one to hold the weight, one to hold the height, and one to capture the result of the entire calculation. It's also helpful to think about what kind of data will be stored in each of these variables. You can state what data type the variable should expect when you declare it. If we switch back to the Excel window, we can hopefully see that the weight in kilograms is some kind of decimal number, as is the height in meters, and as it turns out, so is the BMI value. That's all useful information to help us to declare our variables. It's worth mentioning that we don't actually need to use variables to solve this problem, but using variables will make the code easier to read, write, and maintain later on. The next step then is to declare the three variables that we need. By convention, you declare variables in VBA at the beginning of a subroutine. So let's give ourselves a couple of blank lines at the top and begin declaring our first variable using the keyword dim. Uh, dim is derived from the word dimension, which is a feature of the old Fortran programming language, which, unless you're interested in trivia, isn't a particularly useful thing to remember. Um, you may prefer to think of the mnemonic declare in memory, just as a, as a way to remember what the dim keyword is doing. Following the dim keyword, you can then make up a name for your variable. Let's declare the, the variable that will hold the weight in kilograms. I'm going to call it weight kg. Just like subroutine names and module names, you can't use spaces in the name of a variable, but you can use underscores if you prefer to, to represent spaces, but I'm not going to bother in this particular case. Following the name of the variable, you can write the keyword as, followed by another space, and then choose what type of information will be stored in the variable. For this example, we're going to store some kind of decimal number, and one of the decimal number data types in VBA is called double. So I'm going to use the keyword double and then hit enter to declare my first variable. VBA has a variety of different data types available, but rather than go through them all right now, which would make for quite a boring video, I'll point you to the reference section at the end of this module. Alternatively, you can have a look on the Microsoft Docs website, which has a full summary of all the VBA data types. So this URL here provides you with a full table of all the data types available in VBA. The type we've just used here is called double. If I scroll down a little, we can see the double data type sitting here. And if you want information about the full range of values you're able to hold using that data type, um, there's all the information available to you. So let's return to the VB editor now and then continue declaring variables. We need two more. I'm going to declare another variable called uh, height m, short for meters, and that will also be a double and then another variable which I'll simply abbreviate to BMI rather than spell out body mass index, and that will also be a double. So there we go, our three variables declared and ready to have values stored in them. So let's work out which values we need to assign to our variables. Our code begins by selecting cell A3 and then moves downward through the list until we reach a blank cell at the end. So for each character whose BMI we need to calculate, we'll have a cell containing their name selected. And that tells us that the weight in kilograms is one column to the right, and the height in meters is two columns to the right. 
which gives us a clue about how we can assign values to each of the weight and height variables. Let's return to the Visual Basic Editor and then just inside our do until loop, let's add some code underneath the comments which assign values to our variables. To assign a value to a variable, you need to write the variable's name. Use the IntelliSense list to help you. If you press Control and Spacebar on the keyboard, you can find the weight in kilograms variable listed in that list. So I don't need to type in the entire thing again and risk mistyping it or misspelling it. Once I've typed in the variable name, I can type in an equals operator, which allows me to assign a value to the variable. And in this case, the value will come from the cell that is offset one column to the right of the active cell. We can then do a similar thing for the height in meters. So again, if I press control and space, look for the height in meters variable, assign a value that is equal to the active cell dot offset 0, 0,2 dot value. So those two instructions assign a value to each of the weight and height variables. Now we can assign a value to the BMI variable by performing the calculation involving the weight and height. So let's assign a value to BMI by saying BMI equals, and then we need to retrieve the value that we've previously stored in the weight and height variables. To read the contents of a variable, you simply need to reference its name again. So again, I'm going to use my control space keyboard shortcut so that I can find the weight in kilograms variable. And then I can divide that by the height in meters squared. I'll open a set of parentheses here to perform the height in meters multiplied by height in meters calculation. So height in meters multiplied by height in meters and then close the parentheses. The final step then is to write the value of the BMI variable to the appropriate cell. So that's going to be the cell that's three columns to the right of the active cell. So I'm going to start by referring to the value property of the cell that is offset three columns to the right of the active cell. And then I'm going to assign a value to that property by reading the contents of the BMI variable. So I can spell BMI. I don't need the IntelliSense for that, even I'm capable of spelling BMI. So there we go. We've got a combination of assigning values to variables or writing to variables by writing their name followed by an equals operator. And we've also got a combination of reading the contents of variables by referring to their values after an equals operator. At this point, all we really need to do is check that the procedure works. So let's just rearrange the screen a little bit so we can see both Excel and the VB editor window in the same screen. And then I'm going to begin by using the F8 key to start stepping through my process BMI list procedure. So when we reach this line that says weight in kilograms equals, this is going to allocate the value of cell B3 to the weight in kilograms variable. And then the next line allocates the height in meters to the height in meters variable. And then we perform the calculation and capture the result in the BMI variable. And then the entire result is written out into cell D3 in this case. And there we go. So we can carry on then down the list. If I press F8, it will go down to the next cell in the list and then return to the top of the loop and check if it's in a blank cell. As long as it isn't, it will enter the loop again and then perform the same sequence of instructions. And this will continue happening until we reach a blank cell. So at this point, I'm just going to hit the continue button or press F5 to run the code all the way through to the end. And we can see that the entire list of characters has their BMI calculated. At this point, you could carry on with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson, which asks you to declare another variable and then assign values to it and read values from it. Alternatively, you could simply move on to the next part of this lesson, which explains some debugging techniques that you can use to help when you're working with variables.